Hey everybody, welcome to How to Polish Your Writing. I'm your teacher, Tiffany Poirier, and let's get to it. Have you ever written something that you knew could be a little bit better? Well, polishing, that's the process. It's going to help you communicate effectively and actually carve out your own sense of personal writing style. Now, polished writing, that's a skill you can develop. You can go to a library or bookstore or online and find tons of detailed guides to help you refine your work. There's so much wisdom out there that we don't have time to duplicate everything here, but I've included for you below this video some links to my favorite sources, and we're going to dive in now and highlight 10 big ideas that come up time and time again. Number one, think about your purpose and audience. There are many different ways to reach different audiences and all for different purposes. For example, you're going to write differently if you're writing an instant message versus a children's book or a novel or biography or an advice column or a business plan. And that's going to be different from writing a TV commercial. So write in a manner that's appropriate for the context and ask yourself, am I using the right language, tone and style of writing to serve my purpose and best impact my audience? Two, be sure to organize your ideas. Read things over and see if there's a natural flow and if things are grouped in a way that makes sense. Ask yourself if it would help to divide your writing up more with headings, subheadings, chapter titles, or sections. And you can try this even just as a test. Try to think of a short title that summarizes what a section of your writing is about. And if you can't do it, do you really know what that section is about? Maybe give yourself more time to organize your writing. And three, use correct grammars, punctuation, and spelling. Oops, that's not right. That's better. Four, avoid unnecessary repetition, redundancy, and repeating things over and over. Five, make good, consistent choices about fonts, formatting, and layout. For example, this text starts in Arial, but changes to Times New Roman suddenly. There are too many other different font types, sizes, and styles, and it's just confusing. Especially with things capitalized randomly and spaced out all weird. The emoticon does not look very professional in this context. Also, too many exclamation points here seems a bit nutty. All in all, it looks unpolished. What would be better? For example, this text is in an aerial font throughout. Everything is consistent in size and style. The spacing is correct. Nothing sticks out as unusual. There's even a nice heading that tells you about this paragraph. And it's a good idea to learn and follow font formatting and layout conventions for the genre of writing that you're doing. Like if you were writing a screenplay, the font formatting and layout would be quite different from another type of writing. So just looking at and analyzing an example of a screenplay would then give you an idea of some general rules. And it's a good idea to six, know when to break the rules and how to do this artfully. You can have fun experimenting with font, formatting and layout, and even try new grammar, punctuation and spelling for creative effect, especially when you make things like poems, advertisements and infographics. And with each fun new experiment, just keep checking back with tip number one, asking yourself, does this serve my purpose and my audience? And one rule to always try to live by is seven. Always use non-discriminatory language. Again, thinking about your audience. Write from a place of respect. Don't discriminate or make unfair assumptions about people based on age, ability, background, culture, gender, race, socioeconomic factors, or sexual orientation and lifestyle. Why? Because it's just right to be respectful. And it reads as more professional. And it helps your message because then more people might read your writing. But, of course, with any type of writing faux pas, it does take time to learn to see these and correct them. So it helps to eight. Get the help of an editor, someone who can look things over and point out what and how to improve. And nine, keep learning how to be your own best editor. How? You're doing that right now. And just keep reading up on editing and asking for help and working at it again and again. 
And here's a link so that you can see the kinds of resources that I personally have checked out and shared with my students to help us polish our writing and get to the next level. And lastly, number 10 is an advanced tip for those who really want to go to the next level of excellence and professionalism. Use the right style guide. Use the right style guide. We've all learned a little bit about grammar, punctuation, and style, but English is this wonderfully complex and maddening language, and there are many different types of styles and rules and exceptions. So how we write and which rules we follow, it depends on the kind of writing that we're doing. And I like to think of it like a game. You just got to follow the right rule book or style guide. They're also called style manuals. And that's going to help you know which rules can help you win at the game of great writing. These style guides will precisely answer your questions about grammar, punctuation, spelling, typography, document formatting, and bibliographies and references, and help you incorporate graphics. Now let's look at a few of the popular style guides and how they're used. The Chicago Manual of Style. This is widely used and adapted across a variety of fields, and it's the standard style guide that's used in book publishing, both fiction and nonfiction. It's a totally comprehensive writing guide that you can buy or use online in this handy searchable version. However, all you might need to do is read the free online summaries of Chicago style just to get a sense of it. The Associated Press Style Book. This is the one you want to use if you're a journalist, maybe writing for a newspaper or magazine or making a news broadcast. Business writers often use the AP Style Book as well. Next, the MLA, or Modern Language Association Style. This is used in academic writing, especially in liberal arts and humanities areas. In fact, MLA style is the first one that you're probably going to be introduced to in college or university. It's the one that I first was introduced to in my philosophy courses. Then there's the American Psychological Association Style Guide, or APA. And this one's also used in academic writing, but in areas of social science, like psychology, sociology, anthropology. And I remember having to learn to switch to use this style when I did courses in education. Now there you have four main popular style guides, but there are many other style guides that are customized for writing in different areas. So how do you know which one to use? Well, ask a teacher or a librarian or a professional editor, or I say just choose one, probably like Chicago, and do what the guide tells you and your writing is gonna look so professional and people are gonna be amazed. So where can you get these style guides? As we said, the library, bookstores, or online. And when it comes to polishing your writing, if you're writing something really unique, maybe you just need to do it your way. So long as you generally be consistent and do your best to make it shine. There you go, that was how to polish your writing. Here again are those 10 big ideas. One, think about your purpose and audience. Two, organize your ideas. Three, use correct grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Four, avoid unnecessary repetition. Five, make good consistent choices about fonts, formatting, and layout. Six, know when to break the rules and do it artfully. Seven, always use non-discriminatory language. Eight, get the help of an editor. And nine, keep learning how to be your own best editor. And 10, use the right style guide. I'll see you in the next video.